Hey everyone, welcome back for another deep dive. Today we're tackling a question we hear a lot. NASDAQ 100 versus S&P 500. Like, what's the deal? What's the difference? Right, it's a classic showdown. It is. So to help us unpack this, we're looking at some fresh insights from the NASDAQ Index Research Team. They just dropped a report on Q2 2024 performance. And, uh, well, spoiler alert, the NASDAQ 100's been on a roll. It has been a pretty impressive streak beating out the S&P 500 for 12 last 16 years. 12 out of 16. Okay, so it's not just a good year here or there. We're talking about consistent long-term outperformance. What's the NASDAQ 100's secret sauce? Well, think of it this way. The NASDAQ 100 is like that friend who's always ahead of the curve, you know, always on to the next big thing. It's heavily weighted towards innovation-driven sectors, technology, consumer discretionary, healthcare, the disruptors, the game changers. So it's not just about writing trends. It's about being where the growth is. Exactly. These sectors have seen explosive growth, and the NASDAQ 100's composition reflects that. Think about it, the rise of e-commerce, the shift to cloud computing, the breakthroughs in biotech. Yeah, these aren't just industry buzzwords. They're reshaping how we live and work. Absolutely. And that translates into returns. Just look at 2023, the NASDAQ 100 surged by 55%. It's best year since, get this, 1999. Yeah, 1999. That was a while ago. Okay, but hold on. Big returns can also mean bigger risks, right? Doesn't the NASDAQ 100 have a reputation for being a bit of a roller coaster? True. It can be more volatile compared to the S&P 500. Think of it like this. If the S&P 500 is like a smooth jazz playlist, the NASDAQ 100 is more like, I don't know, a rock concert, more ups and downs, more adrenaline. But interestingly enough, despite the difference in volatility, which, by the way, over the last 16 years, is surprisingly small. The daily returns of the NASDAQ 100 and the S&P 500 actually have a 93% correlation. 93%. So even though they're made up differently, they often move in the same direction. How does that work? That's the million dollar question. And to understand why they sometimes dance to different tunes, we need to unpack what each index is actually made of. It's like comparing those nutrition labels. Two snacks might look the same on the shelf, but have wildly different ingredients. Okay, so let's break down those ingredient lists. What are we talking about here? What are some key differences between what makes up the NASDAQ 100 and the S&P 500? Okay, so let's break down these ingredient lists. What are we talking about here? What are some key differences between what makes up the NASDAQ 100 and the S&P 500? Picture two pies. The NASDAQ 100, it's like a blueberry pie, right? Where tech is king, Yeah. it's the biggest slice by far. But the S&P 500, now that's more like your classic apple pie. You've got your apple slices and other sectors, but then there's this big old chunk of financials. Blueberry pie, apple pie, I'm getting hungry. <laughs> okay, but I see what you mean, different recipes. So we've talked about how crucial tech is to the NASDAQ 100's growth, but what about those financials in the S&P 500? Why are they such a big deal? Well, here's where things get really interesting. The NASDAQ 100, zero exposure to financials. Not one company in that sector makes the cut. Zero. Seriously, that's a huge difference. I wouldn't have guessed that. So how does that actually impact their performance? I mean, in the real world. Remember last spring? All those banking jitters, right? Well, the NASDAQ 100 barely flinched. No exposure to banks, no problem. The S&P 500, on the other hand, they definitely felt the heat. So it's like the NASDAQ 100 has this built-in shield against certain economic, uh, what do you call them, hiccups? Exactly. But, and this is important, that doesn't mean it's invincible. If the tech sector takes a nosedive, the NASDAQ 100 is going to feel it more than the S&P 500. Right, right, trade-offs. But you mentioned the S&P 500 being more diversified, and honestly, that sounds a little less like a roller coaster, you know? Which got to be a good thing for some investors, right? Oh, absolutely. If you're someone who prefers a smoother ride, the S&P 500 with its mix of industries, it might be more your speed. It's like hedging your bets diversification can really help cushion your portfolio when things get bumpy. Makes sense. Okay, so we've looked at past performance, we've teaked under the hood at what makes these indexes tick, but our listeners are trying to connect the dots to their own portfolios. So what's the takeaway? What's the big picture here? Well, while we can't give financial advice, not our lane, what we can do is equip you to ask the right questions. At this NASDAQ report, it suggests the NASDAQ 100 is well positioned for continued growth, especially with AI becoming more and more a part of our lives. It's true. AI is everywhere these days. It is. It's like inescapable. And the NASDAQ 100, with that laser focus on innovation, on tech, they're kind of at the forefront of that AI revolution. But, and this is a big but past performance, 
not a crystal ball. Right. Things can change on a dime in the market. So what you're saying is don't put all your eggs in one basket, even if that basket is woven from AI dreams. Exactly. You've got to factor in your own risk tolerance, your own financial goals, and of course, do your due diligence. Remember that 93% correlation we talked about? Yeah. Yeah, that's why you might not want both of these indexes in your portfolio. Could be too much overlap, diversifying across different asset classes. Now that might be the smarter play. So even if the NASDAQ 100 looks like it's firing on all cylinders, spreading the love might be the way to go. You got it. Now this report, it primarily focused on the U.S. market, but- Right, the U.S. market doesn't just exist in a vacuum. What happens in the rest of the world matters, right? Oh, absolutely. Global events can definitely rock the boat, even here in the U.S. And that kind of leads us to an interesting thought for you to chew on. How might global events like, say, a big shift in international trade or maybe some unexpected political drama, you know, the drill, how might those things impact these indexes down the line? It's a tangled web out there. And staying curious, always a good look. Oh, now that's what I call food for thought. I'm already thinking about ripple effects and all that. Right. It's all about connecting those dots. For example, the NASDAQ 100, with its global players, those companies are often more sensitive to international ups and downs, right? Mm. On the flip side, the S&P 500, while not immune to global events by any stretch, might offer a bit more stability because of its domestic focus. So it's not just about picking an index, it's about understanding all those bigger forces at play that might be pushing and pulling on it, right? 100%. Informed decision-making, that's the name of the game. Take this deep dive as a starting point, never stop asking questions, and keep exploring those different investment avenues. Well said. You heard it here, folks. Whether you're drawn to the NASDAQ 100's growth potential or the S&P 500's steady diversification, remember, knowledge is power. So do your research, weigh those risks and rewards, and most importantly, enjoy the journey of becoming a smarter, more confident investor.